how we can respond to the changing patterns of cybercrime during coronavirus and beyond. The coronavirus crisis has changed the world in just a matter of months and security and cybercrime has been affected as much as anything else. According to the FBI, cyber attacks have increased by 400% during 2020, making it clear that criminals have been quick to capitalize on the opportunities that have emerged due to the pandemic and our reactions to it. Two big trends have enabled this. One is the increase in online activity, including banking and shopping, due to lockdowns and fear of the virus. The other is the vast shift towards working from home in every industry that can accommodate the transition. To consider the question of how we can respond to these changing patterns of tech crime, I spoke to Shira Rubinoff, president of Prime Tech Partners and Secure My Social, as well as Simon Leach, who is a senior advisor in security and risk management at HPE Point Next Services. With company networks now often widely dispersed, and employees logging in remotely from all corners of the earth, there are many more opportunities for criminals to launch data theft, ransomware, or denial of service attacks. A common attack vector has been to prey on people's hunger for information. This involved setting up phony services offering help or advice and harvesting data from unwary visitors, or phishing scams tricking us into handing over sensitive information such as bank or credit card details. According to Rubinoff, among the many challenges faced by industry, one of the most pressing is the need to adapt to managing not just technology but also people in new ways. People working from home had to multitask massively. This include taking care of the elderly or children or other arising issues at home. The reality is that when someone is multitasking, they will be trying to move quickly to get everything done fast. Inevitably this leads to slip-ups that criminals can take advantage of. The starting point is ensuring that staff have secure equipment and connections at home, and clearly defined protocols to follow. Also, businesses need to spend time ensuring they foster a culture of caution and awareness, even when the workforce is widely dispersed. This means a concerted effort to change the fact that the human element of the workforce is often the weakest link in its security infrastructure. While recently there has been a lot of talk and speculation about automated, AI-driven cyber attacks that bypass software and hardware defensive measures, phishing and ransomware attacks that target humans are by far the most common forms of cyber attacks. In fact, Google has said it detects around 18 million phishing attempts where attackers try to trick users into handing over personal data such as passwords or bank details and about 240 million spam emails every day relating to COVID-19. Leach tells me, we have seen this in the past when a celebrity passes away, and the next day there is a bunch of malware strains that are taking advantage of people looking for information. Or there is a natural disaster, and the next day there is a bunch of fundraising scams trying to get people to donate money to a charity that doesn't exist. Of course, technological changes have led to new problems emerging, too. Companies that formerly only needed to maintain small, secure external networks to cope with limited amounts of off-site activity may now need to provide secure home connections to hundreds of workers. Many will be using cloud tools such as remote desktops, giving them or anyone who is able to hijack their connection full access to corporate systems. Concern is the danger this activity poses to healthcare. Hospitals and other organizations in the sector are prime targets for two reasons. The first is due to the large amount of valuable personal data that passes through their systems, which is valuable on the black markets. The second is that thieves that use ransomware believe they will pay up rather than risk patients' health if their systems go down. In March, one such attack forced a hospital in the Czech Republic to temporarily shut down all its IT systems, at the height of the pandemic. Rubinoff says, think about a bad actor going into a large network of hospitals, they can create a ransomware attack and demand massive amounts of money. Organizations have now realized that they are going to be a step ahead of this current cybercrime. This may mean having more backups off-premises or having certain cybersecurity protocols around the organization to curtail this. An important part of any remedy, both experts I talk to agree, will be the principle of zero trust. This means examining every facet of a system, from the people to the hardware, with the assumption that it cannot be trusted to remain secure. Protocols are put in place to verify and validate every request for information, and access is only granted when they are shown to be legitimate and secure. It also means absolutely every data access request or transaction is logged, so when breaches and unauthorized access does occur, it can quickly be traced to its source, and any weakness in the defense can be shored up. 
Leach tells me, really working from home has been the kickstarter for that, because remote access to organizations is one of the key use cases where we are seeing companies starting to use these zero trust initiatives. This means requests from security teams to set up zero trust systems, that may previously have been marked as get done, but not necessarily today, by senior management, are being treated with the urgency required for the first time. Another key principle that needs to be adopted by organizations hoping to make it through these turbulent times with their data intact is to build security into operational systems from the very start. Businesses start out with small amounts of data that grows as they do, so it can be tempting to put off deploying security measures until there is something to protect, but this can be a costly mistake. Most importantly, make sure you think about security up front and don't bolt it on as an afterthought. If you make sure you consider it right from a security by design perspective, it is going to pay dividends later, Leach says. Summary. One thing that is certain is that cyber attacks are not going to slow down. Since the start of the internet age, they have consistently grown in both numbers and in the volume of data lost. With sophisticated new forms of attack involving AI and automation becoming common, new approaches to information security will be needed that use those same technologies to fight back, AI to AI. However, at the same time, we must be careful we do not lose focus on mitigating against good old-fashioned human fallibility. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Talent and Skills Hub, enabling environment for actualization of passions and ambitions. Also, remember to share this video with others to help them know how to respond to the changing patterns of cybercrime during coronavirus and beyond.